Good morning, Story Side. You glad to be in God's presence today? Wasn't that a great time of worship? Thank you, Jesus. I want to welcome some of the people who are joining us online. Uh, there was a lot of names that jumped out to us, but a few of them. Gail uh, is joining us online. Julie Hinklin, the Bars. Uh, Linda's online. John Thompson, the Wallace family. Uh, Timothy White, Diane Moore, the Moores joining us in West Virginia. Uh, Brenda Smith, Michelle Knight, Jason Smith, the Heindels. Uh, Gary Royce, his family, praying for you, Gary, your continued healing. Mary Jane in Canada. William Bennett, uh, Becky Walker joining us online. Becky, we've been praying for you, believing for your continued healing and strength. Uh, but for everyone joining us online, would you just welcome them and let them know how great it is to have them today? I did want to say, too, in honoring Jerry uh, Adkins and his family, uh, one of my favorite things was when uh, we did a study maybe three or four months ago but Anna, our kids coordinator, was giving me some of the metrics and numbers on families that attend a couple of times a year, 17 times and less, families that are 17 to 34, families that are 34 to 52. And all of a sudden, just when we're looking at all of these numbers, but to see the Adkins family, like way up there, like hardly ever miss a Sunday uh, that they are having their kids here and when I just hugged Jerry, I told him I'm reminded of his story. His wife invited him week after week, month after month to come, and he wouldn't. Uh, and finally decided to come one Sunday. And during worship, um, a time like we just had, uh, they were singing. And if you remember, Jerry has shared his story on the stage, uh, how he was so overcome with emotion that he got up and walked out. Lindsay thought maybe he was leaving. Uh, but actually, he went to a bathroom stall back here and uh, for quite a long period of time just wept his eyes out, telling God how much he needed him in his life. And uh, their family's never been the same since. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm just so grateful for what God has done in the Adkins family. I do want to make mention as well that next service, if you have never been through what we call next steps, it's really just getting more connected to story side. Some would call it a new members class. Uh, others come just to hear a little bit of the history and vision. Uh, but next service, my wife and I will be back there uh, in the cafe area. Um, and there in the cafe, my wife and I, the team will be back there next service, 1045 AM. Uh, and we already have numerous people that are signed up for that. But if you would like just to stay, and be part of that and get a little bit more connected, hear a little bit more about StorySide, you are welcome to do that. They've got coffees and refreshments and all kinds of things. So for those of you that like free food, that's an option as well. Uh, you're like, sure, I'll take free coffee. Uh, but you are welcome to come back and, and join us for that. I want to pray uh, over today's message and the next subsequent uh, weeks. I'm not really sure how long I'm going to stay here. Uh, but the last week or two, I've just been feeling a draw to talk to you about the blessing. Everyone say the blessing. And so for the next few weeks, I just want to talk to you about the blessing. And uh, just pray even today that God will open up your heart and you will be able to hear what he wants you to hear today and speak to us. So let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for your spirit that I have sensed today. Um, I just am so grateful for the anointing and so grateful just when I sense, I know you're everywhere present, uh, but sometimes we're not always aware or open like we should be. But today, I'm so thankful that I sense you in this room. I sense you working. I pray that you would anoint my lips, my mind, help me to speak to these people what you want them to hear. I promise you, I will give you all the glory. And so do something special today. Do something miraculous today. Uh, and while we're praying, as we often do, I pray for every church in our area that you would bless them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone say the blessing. When you think about even hearing the word, what does it mean? What does it mean, the blessing? I think there's a lot of meanings, but you know, one of the things that would first come to mind is if you have ever, not everyone does this, I think we probably should, but if you have ever 
had to go to someone. I remember when I did with my father-in-law, Steve, and ask for his blessing to marry Angel, my wife. I remember when Trey, my son-in-law, came to me and said, could I get the blessing uh, to marry Brooklyn, my daughter? One of, one of you, this was just a couple of weeks ago, but one of you was sharing with me that when you went to your now father-in-law and said, could I have your blessing uh, that your father-in-law told you, and he used a few words I can't use on a Sunday and on this stage, but he, the good version is you're out of your mind. <laughs> you're out of your mind. <laughs> but he added a few more words to that as well, but Speaking of, speaking of marriage, and, and I love we have our marriage retreat coming up soon, uh, but I heard the joke about the counselor who was meeting with a husband and wife. The counselor is meeting with this couple, and the counselor is telling them the importance of communication and caring and learning from each other, and you need to know each other. And the counselor looked at the husband and, and said, for instance, do you know your wife's favorite flower? The husband's sweating, he's nervous. He said, Pillsbury all-purpose. Um, <laughs> husbands, how many, knows what, how many know we miss it sometimes, right? We don't always get the right answers. But maybe you, when I say the blessing, you would think of that. You know, I, I, I got a blessing to get married. For other people, if we just say, what does it mean, God bless you? What does that mean? What does that even mean? Some people honestly might, might think of things even like sneezing. Not to oversimplify it, but you hear it a lot. If, if you just in everyday life think of when, when does someone say God bless you, a lot of times it's if someone sneezes, right? Which they've always done it, but even the last few years now, if you ever sneeze in a, snore, a store or an airplane or something, it's like everyone's looking at you like, what are you doing out? Go home. Uh, it's like, it's okay to sneeze. Um, but people will respond, God bless you, right? God bless you. Um, maybe you've heard the blessing if you've been at a dinner, your family, maybe Thanksgiving, Christmas, but the food will be there and people would say, you know, hey, Brian, or, you know, hey, Isaiah, why don't you say the blessing? And someone will pray over the food. I traveled for years back in the day, and you always see different things, cultures and styles, and one of the things that I loved, I, I was speaking at a church in South Bend, Indiana, and the pastors there, uh, they don't pray over every specific meal, but Randy, they, they do pray, and I was part of several of them, I preached there uh, six different weeks, but they would pray when they got the groceries. And I'd never seen it like that before. They would put all the groceries in the kitchen and the family would gather together and they would read some scriptures and they would pray how grateful they were for the groceries. And actually it was a pretty special thing. But when it comes to food, maybe you've thought or heard that before, that we're, we're going to pray a blessing over the food. Um, whether it's, whether it's uh, maybe a speech at times, or people gather together, and I, I like when they say it, I miss when they don't, but a lot of times they will close their talk by saying, and God bless the United States of America. How many ever heard that before? How many are, God bless the USA? When you look at the blessing, when you look at the blessing, it's actually in Scripture just shy, give or take on translations, around 500 times. It's a lot, around 500 times. If you go all the way back to Genesis, you're going to see that God blessed, whether it was creation or family, the Sabbath, the Bible will tell you that God blessed it. God blessed it. God gave Moses instructions um, on how to bless the people. Sometimes you'll see someone go like this. You know, it's even since a child, often people will say, you know, just, just take your hands and just put them out before the Lord and let's just ask God to bless us. Let's ask God to bless us. Scripturally, when you look at this blessing in number six, 
God tells Moses, I want you to speak to Aaron and his son saying, this is the way you shall bless. Everyone say bless. This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's called the Aaronic blessing. And when you think about the blessing, they say that almost every Jewish prayer, I witnessed it the last uh, week, just, just hearing some of them pray in Matthew, our guide, but almost every Jewish prayer will start with the words, Baruch Atah Adonai, it means blessed are you, Lord. Blessed are almost every prayer. I, re I read one Jewish scholar that said one of the uh, most pertinent and important things that they do, and so they will do it over their food, they'll do it over you know, what they would consider the blessings in their lives. They do it all the way right down to sweet smells. Like if there's certain smells that there are prayers that they will pray that would say Baruch Atah Adonai, that all of these things where they would say, blessed are you, Lord, because of, of the benefits you've given to us in our lives. We want to bless you, Lord. One of those instances of blessing the Lord, Psalm 34, we sang earlier about it, bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. But we would sing those words, bless the Lord, O my soul. David in Psalm 34 said this, I will bless, I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. When it's comfortable. When I'm not worried about someone that may look down the row and be like, what's he doing? What's she doing? I will do it when it fits in my schedule. Is that what it says? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Verse 8 says, taste and see the Lord is good. How? How blessed is the person who trusts in Him. When you look at these verses I just read to you, over and over again it says things like the Lord, His praise, His name. There's others. But I would sum up that by simply reminding you and I both that the emphasis is on God. The emphasis is on God. Sometimes every one of us, we, we can maybe take too, too um, much time worried about, you know, what I've accumulated and what I've accomplished. We, we could maybe focus a lot on titles. We, we could start looking at you, you, your house, your vehicle, your car, your possessions, your... Start looking at things and maybe taking a lot of that credit, like after all I've done and after how hard I've worked and after all of the schooling. And, and I'm not saying it's not good to honor what you've accomplished, but, but I think when we really look at Baruch Atah Adonai, when we really look at, I, I'm willing to decrease, I need to decrease, he he's, needs to increase in my life. I think one of the first things that we learn just from these four verses I read to you is I, I want to make sure the emphasis when it comes to praise, when it comes to worshiping Him, when it comes to blessing the Lord, the emphasis is on God. For those of you that have been to the Holy Land, when you talk about this emphasis or focus on God, it is the reverential side of it, the awe of being in some of those places and moments and we're looking at potentially taking a group the end of next February and if you've never been I, I would encourage you when we do have an interest meeting maybe to think about it uh, but 
One of the things, you know, I love the Sea of Galilee. I, I'm always in awe looking at the Valley of Megiddo. I know Pastor Chad said that was one of the things that stood out to him, the Valley of Megiddo. Uh, the Beatitudes, you know, some of my, I love the, uh, the Jordan. Uh, you know, of course, the empty tomb. The Garden of Gethsemane. When, when you're there and they're saying that many of those trees they believe are 2,000 plus years old and just, it's just, it's very awesome and awe as in like a, you're there, you don't even always have words. But one of the things that stood out to me this trip was when we went to Bethlehem, Israel had a, a pretty high terror rate while we were there. It was their highest level. And so some of you right now is like, I'm not coming to the interest meeting. Um, but the terror level was, was high. They weren't sure that, that we were going to go to Bethlehem. The last two trips that I was a part of or aware of, they didn't go to Bethlehem for similar reasons. And so they had asked, who wants to go? And I've, I've, I really wanted to go. You sing songs like, Oh Little Town of Bethlehem, and, and you, you read the scriptures. I, I, I really wanted to see what it was like. And so um, we raised our hand to go to Bethlehem. And the whole time in my head, I'm thinking, like, my wife would not totally agree with this decision, probably. But she's in Ohio. And... <laughs> Let's go. Um, uh, just kidding. Um, sort of, but we, you know, we we don't we can't take our guide in there, and we can't take our tour bus. So they give us, you know, a, a guide, and we get into. I've never seen the inside of a 15 passenger van graffitied until this one, uh, but all the seats, everything is all graffitied, and uh, I'm like, Pastor Chad, you sit here by me, and like, let's just. Keep our eyes wide open. Um, but we go into Bethlehem, and, and this, this really, it, it was one of the, the top things from my trip was when we went to the place that they believe, at least in that general vicinity, is potentially where Christ could have been born. And while we were there, it's also where they have written many of the scriptures, um, Many of the Bible readings we have now, you could even just sense the appreciation of not only John 1.14 is this area here where the Word became flesh, but this is also because of the life of Christ where Jesus then became the Word again that we're talking about even right now. It was just, it was just a great moment, but one of the things that stood out to me is when we are making our way down, so if you ever do go, you will just see that, and I will tell you, if you can't go, even in a moment like this, just as much as I can so you can maybe imagine it, but some of those areas have been built upon and built on top of over the years, so a lot of times in the tours, you're going down underground, or you are seeing the excavating, you're going down to see what they believe are some of the originations of things, and so you go into this area where they believe that in this this particular region or, or space or spot, Christ was born. And when you go in there, I believe they have a picture on the screen uh, that I wanted to show you. So here to, to my right is what they call, so we're going to go in through that door, and that door is called the door of humility. The door of humility. And then you see just to show the size of it, where I'm here at the door, on the other side of the door, you see Pastor Ethan and I, and you see now that we're standing up, the difference between the door and our height, and then that's my daughters and I, down once we made our way underneath the surface and underground to where they believe somewhere there could have been the spot, the space Christ was born. I share that to say that Junior... It was such a holy moment for me. I wish I would have had more than a minute or two because the tour guide is like, all right, let's move on. But there was something about when you just got down and you were trying to get through the door of humility that it was a holy moment for me because I was reminded how important it is when we come in the presence of God. How important it is when we are thinking, talking, singing about blessing the Lord and praising the Lord 
It's not a place for pride. It's not a place for ego. It's not a place for arrogance. It's not a place for, look, for every, look at everything I've done in my life. It's a place for every one of us to just get down and say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, if it wasn't for God's grace in my life, where would I even be without Jesus? Is there anyone today you feel that way in your life? You're like, you know what, if it wasn't for Jesus in my life, the writer here is saying his praise. The writer is telling us in the psalmist here, oh, magnify the Lord with me. There's something about praising God. There's something about being grateful. Just this week, my wife would tell you, I have probably said in the hundreds of times, I know that's a high number, I don't think it would be an exaggeration. You could probably ask Angel driving down the road in our house. I've just been saying over and over, Baruch Atah Adonai, Baruch Atah Adonai. Just bless the Lord when it comes to the basics of even our lives. So the big things, whether or not it's a good health report or Baruch Atah Adonai, right down to there just being a roof over our head. It's been cold lately. Heat working in our house, food to eat, a vehicle that started up, the blessings of my children. Then you start thinking about the forgiveness of God, the grace and mercy of God. Start thinking about the fact we have the Word of God. If you really start thinking about the goodness of God, you can't help but start, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. If we real, I know there's a lot going on in life. But, but if we start thinking about the goodness of God, there really is a lot for you and I to be thankful for. He says something that I think is a convicting challenge for all of us. When he says, I will bless the Lord, here it is, at all times. What are the times that are most difficult for you to live this out? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. If I was to ask you right now, what is the most difficult time for you to live that verse out? What's the most difficult time for you to live that verse out? What, what would come to your mind? Micaiah had a friend over Friday night and we're driving down the road on Saturday morning, spending the weekend. And so I just asked this 13 year old friend, I said, what are, what are the most difficult times for you to love God? What are the most difficult times for you to stay a Christian? And I just wait. How many knows if you ask a 13 year old, you have no idea what they're going to say. But we're in the car. I felt like it was a safe spot. The windows are up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And he says something, honestly, that I wasn't expecting. It, it, in a way, stopped Angel and I. She was in the passenger seat in our tracks. We look at each other. Because my mind immediately went to some of the things I'm aware of that has happened in his life. But he says, I think the hardest thing for me when it comes to, to doing that, my faith, my trust in God, is when people in my family have died and I didn't understand why. It's not the answer that I was thinking he was going to say, but for about a five minute stretch, the car is quiet and I'm thinking about this verse right here, it's easy to quote not always as easy to live out. Throughout the day yesterday, I continued to ask people over and over again the similar or same question. And the wide variety of answers, Matt, that comes back in a moment like that, if I was to ask you right now. When we say, I will bless the Lord at all times, what are the times that test and try your commitment? For some people, I, I think, I don't want to say they're superficial, but for some people it's, you know, may, maybe more, more surface kind of answers that, you know, well, I will bless the Lord when it's sunny and 90. 
You know, it's a joke really amongst pastors, but, but there's an element of truth. Studies say that if your favorite team loses, giving could be down 20%. Now, as a pastor, it's always amazing to me, like how can a sport affect something so drastically, a win or a loss? Other people will say, you know, and, and, and sometimes pastoring, Pastor Ethan will tell me, man, we used to talk about this stuff and I see it now, pastoring and People are like, well, it's raining. I can't come if it's raining. Well, it's windy. I can't. Well, if it's... And so sometimes there's, you know, there's things like that where, you know, the last few years, even at times, people would say, you know, gas prices. And I, I don't often say it to people, but it's very interesting when church is like, well, I can't come to church because I don't like crowds, but then we're at Cedar Point or Walmart or wherever we are. Or it's like, I can't come to church for gas prices, but then we're driving out to eat or we're driving to the movies or we're driving, wherever it is, sports practices or something. But what, what, is, what is the thing that if we were to say, does Micah, you would ask yourself, do I? Do I bless the Lord at all times? Is this praise? Do, when, when the writer talks here, if you notice, he starts by I. I'm going to make my boast in the Lord. But then he invites you to be part of it. Brian, why don't you magnify the Lord with me? Jake, why don't you magnify the Lord with me? Regina, why don't you magnify the Lord with me? He starts here, but then he ends up, you know what? Let's worship God together. Let's get together and tell God how awesome he is and how great he is. But what are the things that cause you and I to miss out on those moments? Is it our schedule? Is it something so simple as our feelings? I don't feel like it. Feelings are fickle. Feelings will lead you and I down paths we shouldn't go down in life. Right? We don't walk by feelings. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like raising my hand today. I don't feel like clapping. I don't feel like saying, bless the Lord. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like. I think sometimes, if you notice the start of this psalm, he said, I will. In other words, he exercises will. I will. I heard an old preacher, he's passed now, but he used to always say, I will to do God's will. He used to say it all the time. I will to do God's will. Sometimes the spirit side of our lives, we need to almost press pause on our feelings dictating and directing so much in our lives. And we just need to say, you know what feelings? I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. When I think of all times, if we just use the word time, think of how quickly that can become part of our vocabulary or catching me at a bad time or I don't have time for this or time is getting away from me. Does my lifestyle resemble someone who blesses the Lord at all times? When you look scripturally, and I'm coming to a close, when you look scripturally, one of the times, because the writer is saying, I will bless the Lord at all times, one of the times that the Bible talks about that could impact and affect us, if you would say, Micah, what are the things that could maybe hold me back from living this life that is 24-7, all times, blessing the Lord and His praise being on my lips? The scripture would talk about Perilous times. You realize in the last days, perilous times will come. In 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy uses the words latter times. L-A-T-T-E-R, latter times. Uh, and it says in these times, people are actually going to depart from the faith. The Bible talks about, we, we would use the word end times. It talks about knowing times and seasons. Some of the words and translations would say that these times are unsettled times, dangerous times, times of frustration, depending on the translation. Matthew 24, verse 10 to 12 says, during that time, now I'm just giving you some examples of times in Scripture. During that time, many believers will lose their faith, they will turn against each other and hate each other, not people. Notice that? 
that this, th these times can affect believers. Many false prophets will come and cause many people to believe things that are wrong. There will be so much more evil in the world that the love of most believers will grow, will grow cold. I would just submit to you today that every one of us, regardless of where we fall in the exact timeline that's been debated for years and years and years, but, but you and I have to be guarded to hold on to our faith. That whether it's feelings, whether or not it's the pressure of society and political correctness, regardless of what it is that you and I cannot allow ourselves to let go of this desire, this heart, this passion, that I will bless the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That I want to serve God. I want to endure. And every one of us to be challenged to hold on to this heart that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Another time that stood out to me when I've been thinking about this the last week or two is, and I'm closing, but I, pastoring over going on now some sort of ministry for 33 years, but I think all of us can struggle when it comes to what, what I called invisible times. I don't know if that's the exact wording, but Hopefully you can hear my heart on it, invisible times. That Micah, from your observation, scripturally but also pastorally, what are the times that you see people start slipping? I think this is one of them. I think it's one of probably my top three or four. That it seems like when life becomes invisible, that we really struggle to keep our faith as strong as what I think it should be for both of us, for you and I both. What I mean by that, you know, Job said in 23.9, I'm looking for God and I just, I just can't see him. I don't know where he's at. In Acts 1, in Acts 1, the Bible tells us it's not for you to even know all of the finite details of these, these times. But then he goes on to say, but I'm going to give you power. In these invisible times, and I'm just giving you a, a summary of maybe some of the things I've observed. In these times where you feel like it's incomplete, it's hard to understand, maybe you misunderstand, or you feel like you've been misunderstood, you have questions of why. Now, I know you're not a 13-year-old sitting in the back seat of my car, but a 13-year-old that would say, my answer is, when I feel like it's the toughest, is when people have died that I love and I don't understand why. I know you're not a 13-year-old in the back seat of, of the car with Angel and I, but I'm just saying, I, it's because it's not just one, I've heard it many times, I feel like in this invisible time that you and I go through where we don't know exactly what is going on, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and maybe it feels unsettled or unsure, and that could be in everything from your relationships, your decisions, your choices. When you're there, could be when you're in college, some of the conversations we've had, Seth. It could be when, when you feel like, Pastor Mike, I'm a single parent, or Pastor Mike, I don't know who the right relationship is going to be, or Pastor Mike, our marriage, our family right now, or our finances, are, and you're just not sure. And maybe you've been in a storm before. Maybe you've been in a storm before. And you, you have even changed maybe your speed, or you've put on your four-way flashers, or you've pulled off the exit or the side of the road. And if someone was to ask you why, why why'd you do that? Why'd you pull over? Why'd you put your four-ways on? Maybe it would, it would be easy to say, is visibility. I've been on this road a hundred times, and usually I can see so far out, but because of the rain or the snow, or I could barely, see, I'm like, it's my headlights, like, the visibility causes all of these things to change in my life. 
And I would ask you today, spiritually, spiritually, what do you do when the storms of life affect your visibility? And maybe you're not like Job, like I looked here and I looked here and I don't see him, but in your own way, you're like, what is God doing in my life right now? Are you able in that moment to still say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, I, I don't know what you're doing, I don't know where you're at exactly, I'm not sure of all of the details, but I don't need to know the details because I know while I'm here, you're already there. And if you notice verse 8, and I'm closing here, but notice verse 8, blessed, blessed, blessed. Blessed is what? We read it together. Blessed is the man who trusts God. That there would be something on the inside of us, even when visibility isn't clear, blessed is the person who trusts God, God, I don't know everything that's going on, but I trust you. I may not see all the details, but I trust you. It may feel unsettled and unsure, but I trust you. Can I bless the Lord in moments when my visibility is limited? Another time, this will be the final one, but I, they're not really fancy words. It's just words that come to mind when I, when I think of watching people have to endure and have to persevere. And it's tough times. Tough times. How many's ever been through a tough time? How many of you could raise both hands? Both hands and a foot? I started writing just this week. I got home on Tuesday and started making a list just this week of calls, conversations. One lady talking to me about her health and cancer. Another business owner talking to me about being stole from, lied to. Another business owner talking to me about money taken, staffing. Another guy talked to me this week about wife leaving and family and the dynamics there. Multiple surgeries. Two conversations about families, family members in nursing homes and the loneliness and one of them feels like there's some, some sort of inappropriate whatever taking place. Another guy reached out to me, used to be in ministry, now he doesn't believe at all. A second reached out to me, used to be in ministry, now said by his own words, I'm in depression. Another dad reached out to me about the anniversary of the death of his daughter and how he's been struggling this week. Another about offense and forgiveness and how the reason they have gotten sideways or wayward is, is the offense. Another talked to me about students and how they feel unsafe and the only way they feel safe is whether or not they have some sort of protection. Two teachers talked to me about the foreseeable future for them in the world of teaching. Marriages and business and debt, age. On the way here this morning, one of our seniors, I offered 20 minutes before church, can I get someone to drive you, but struggled to breathe through the night. And other people that would say, Pastor Micah, my marriage, and one of the main things I wrote it down is I just feel so unappreciated. That's just a few of the ones I know about. So to say tough times, your row right now is probably full of people. People around you today. Because every one of these mattered to me. I was going to study on Wednesdays. Wednesday's my study day. I study a little bit every day, but usually Wednesday's my full dedicated study day. And it turned into calls or meetings for about six hours, which was not the study thing I set out to do, but it was some, a lot of this stuff. But even at the end of the day, actually, my heart felt full as a pastor. But even when I, I go home on Wednesday, I'm just thinking about tough times. There's a lot of people going through tough times. And we haven't even talked about the nation and shooting down balloons and I'm being serious. 
When I talk about holding on to your faith, there's things every day that can try to rock your faith. There's things every day that can try to sway or move or affect that visibility. So I know I can quote the verse to you, I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's come together at 9 a.m. and praise Him. That's not always as easy as what it sounds. But I want to challenge you today. I want to encourage you today. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your thanksgiving. Don't lose your worship. Have a heart and a desire to do it at all times. People will say, you know, they say about 70% of people in church worldwide, not just here, but just in general, about 70% of people don't tithe or give, and they have their reasons for it, I guess. But people often say, Pastor Micah, if I win the lottery, I'm paying your church off. I've had a lot of people say, I'm paying your church off. And we still have a mortgage, so that's not happened yet. But <laughs> People's even asked me, like, would you take it? If we win the lottery, we pay your church off. Are you going to take it? I'm like, well, the wealth of the wicked is... I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do you know how easy it is for us to live for God that way? Like, if I win the lottery, I'm going to give... So what does that mean? If you get a promotion in the preferred office in the parking spot, you're going to worship God? What does that mean if the lottery of life is always dishing out to you and I that we're going to say, I'm committed, I am in this, God, I, is that what it means? Well, what happens, Micah, when you hit the low point? What happens when you're in the storm? You and I can't live for God with some lottery mindset. God help you and I to have a heart that would be when it feels like it's falling apart, I still bless you, Lord. When I'm not even sure what's going, I still bless you, Lord. When I pray prayers and they don't get answered like I want, I still bless you, Lord. The Bible says in Philippians 4, I know how to face humble circumstances. I love that even reading it because I was thinking about the door of humility. I know both how to face humble circumstances and how to have abundance. Everywhere and in all things, I've learned the secret both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need because I can, I can, whether it's a high or whether it's a low, I can, you can do all things through Christ who gives me strength the psalmist said the Lord lives and blessed blessed Marukata Adonai blessed blessed be my rock Matthew 21 when, when you read about Christ entering in they begin to cry out Hosanna to the son of David blessed Blessed is he who comes, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. Bless. Bless his name. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And Micah, Micah, forget not all his benefits. Story side. Bless the Lord. And forget not all of his benefits. Would you close your eyes and give me the opportunity to pray with you today? My hope and prayer would be that a couple of your takeaways as you log off today or you leave this room, my hope is your pastor would be that we would all be reminded of the door of humility. That we don't live a life where culture, society is going to tell us, climb the ladder, get all of the titles, all of the positions, step on whoever, whatever, it's all about you. 
A hope and prayer would be that you and I would be reminded today of that door of humility. That if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for God, a hope and prayer would be that you and I would be challenged to bless the Lord at all times. And we don't let all of the stuff, all of the things, very difficult side of it is when we talk about those tough times. It doesn't take away from the tough times. It doesn't take away from the storms. That it does remind you and I that I can do all things. I can get through the tough days and the tough weeks through a God that gives me strength. So how do I bless the Lord at all times? Don't let my feelings dictate it. I will to do His will. And so I pray over every one of you today that you and I would be able to live a life that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. 2023, I'm going to hold on to my faith. I'm going to hold on to my worship. I'm going to hold on to my belief. I'm going to hold on to those things not going to let the times the times cause me to waver and so I pray over our church today that you would strengthen every one of them bless every one of them I pray these things in Jesus name